This is one of the really good ones. This is a 1954 Jaguar D-Type, the first year that the model was made, and it was one of the quickest cars at the time that it came out. Ultra sleek, streamlined car. They were actually able to uh, make the car shorter, lower to the ground by tilting the engine, uh, an idea they stole from Mercedes-Benz, but used to great effect. It had a 250 horsepower, straight six, uh, 3.4 liter engine. And although it didn't win in its first year at Le Mans, it did win uh, the three following years in 1955. 1956 and 1957. Uh, a very rare car. Under 100 were built, and a few of those are actually lost in a building fire. So if you see one of these at a car show or at an old race meet, definitely pay attention. The version we're looking at is part of the 1954 Endurance Sports Car mod for R Factor 2, and this is the first R Factor 2 video that I'm doing on my channel, but I've got a couple reasons for that. This mod tries to recreate the 1954 sports car season, adapting some of the default content of R Factor 2. But as you can see here, although in the mod I believe this is called a jungle cat car, uh, this Jaguar D-Type is really well done, and the whole mod overall is extremely well done. The mod itself was created by users Wuchu and Mantisig and is available in the Steam Workshop for R Factor 2. So all you need to do is subscribe to it and it's free of course and you can drive these awesome sports cars. I had a few folks send me the link to this mod when it came out and it definitely was on my list to try and is one of the main reasons why I installed R Factor 2 overall. The other reason is for where we're at. This is the full 37 and 3 quarter mile mountain course from the Isle of Man, originally created for Grand Prix Legends by Jim Pearson, but faithfully converted and recreated in R Factor 2 by S. Victor. Users S. Victor and Cordy are the two credited with the conversion, and they went about it the right way. Uh, Jim was very clear when he released the track that he didn't want to see it ripped and ported poorly into other games, and uh, he did state if the, anybody had an intention to actually convert it faithfully, that just contact him, and that's what they did. They worked with Jim very closely and sought his approval over the whole process, and from all accounts and what's written on the Steam Workshop page to download this track, uh, Jim very much much appreciated the work done and honestly having driven it a few laps myself it's a really great way to experience this work that I think is available to a lot more people. I first took a look at this circuit back in 2019 when it came out for Grand Prix Legends and was blown away by the work Jim did over that 15 year period to put it together. So having it in another sim that it's different selections of cars and of course the great handling and physics that R Factor 2 has it's an absolute treat. So I wanted to do a lap around the circuit in the Jaguar D-Type just to show off how awesome this is in R-Factor 2 and talk about the car and the sim overall. It's the first video I've ever done in it. So roll out of the pits here. We're in Douglas right at the end of the pit lane. And we'll work our way out here. So this is not going to be an ultimate 16-minute high-speed lap. I just simply don't know the course well enough, even now with how many laps I've tried around here. But we'll give it give it up a little bit in some spots where uh, I know where I'm going. We'll come here to the start, iconic starting area, down the hill through Bray Hill. Just coast the car on in there. High commit area on the bikes and the compression through the dip. So, so cool. Come to the top of the hill now. And work it down towards Quarter Bridge. So this... Really difficult to get the car slowed down, especially coming downhill. Cold tires, cold brakes. We're gonna slide a bit wide, actually. Get on the throttle, though. <laughs> Made it through successfully. And work towards Brad and Bridge. I've done possibly 50 laps at this point around this circuit in Grand Prix Legends or between Grand Prix Legends, this R Factor 2 version and uh, the Isle of Man TT bike sim, all of which have, you know, good versions of the circuit, but still there's so much of it to discover and learn. Let's get on the throttle now. Real high speed section as we head towards Union Mills here. on the second gear, come over the top of the hill, stick it on close to the wall on the inside, want a slow entry speed here to this right left, but maximize the exit, so we'll head on to the long straightaway.
This part of the track, very, very cool. Come through the top of the hill here, right-hander, I think it's called Elm. This corner, probably tricky on a bike, but pretty easy in a car. Flat out there, up to fourth gear for a second. Now we'll come to the Ball Gary corner, get it down to third gear, actually accelerate once we slow down enough. We want to use that accelerator to help rotate the car but it's called Ball is Scary for a reason. Come through now, Glen Vine. In this part of the track I do know. We'll come up now to Crosby. In this corner, flat out in a car, but very sketchy. You need to try to get that apex perfectly near the wall so we don't run wide there. Now I'll head up the hill, top of the hill here called Highlander. I just want you to watch how this car reacts to getting off the track up here. Slam down. That to me helps visually show you how good the physics are in our factor too. I was trying to look for something that visually could show it because obviously as I'm driving, I could tell you this feels amazing, but if you haven't played it yourself, I'm not sure you'd be able to, uh, to identify that, but coming over the crest like that, the way the car reacts, to losing the track and coming back to it with such force. I just don't experience that in other sims. And I think this car helps accentuate it a bit. The suspension is so loose, it rolls around, you can see here through the corners, but it just, to me, looks right. And I don't see that in a lot of other sims. Everything this is doing, though, I don't think it's a secret that people think R Factor 2 feels amazing. And I wholeheartedly agree. It has everything right, just everything coming through the wheel at me come through Griba Bridge there. Everything coming through the wheel at me is, is so accurate feeling and I can put the car, you know, in most cases exactly where I want it to go unless I'm making a mistake, honestly. And a lot of mistakes are recoverable, which is very helpful in, in a car like this. All right, we'll come down, coming up to the ball of crane here. And this is a corner that's really easy to mess up the first dozen times you race around here. Come down our first gear. The first one that's significantly into the lap that you need to know about. You can't fake your way through that corner. The road itself crowned for almost the entire circuit, meaning the, the middle on this white line is higher up than the edges, and that in, real, in, in road you know, driving helps make the water slide off the surface. A racetrack would never have something like that, though, and so it makes it quite interesting to drive where if you stay in that right lane around the outside of a, a left-hand corner, the track actually slopes away from the inside off camber, so you have a more difficult time getting through there. Dip down now into the mists. First gear right-hander here. On the little snippet of where you can download this track in the workshop, the mod author talks about how they worked with Jim Pearson through the whole process. And Jim is very adamant about you know them including the features and things that uh, he did in the Grand Prix Legends version. So glad they did. I mean, it shows this fog and everything. Uh, you'll see airplanes and birds at various parts in the sky. Those little details add a lot to a track and are often missed or purposely just left out in a conversion to, to get it done. But with something like this, you don't want to cheat at all. And they did such a good job. Come through. This is Glen Helen. Run a little wide there. First gear now. Head up the hill. That throttle down, a lot of wheel spin. Now past Sarah's cottage. I want to try to accelerate out of here as best I can. This once again will lead onto a very fast section known as the Konkivati Straight. And I hope I pronounce you know most of these corners right. I'm uh, not from the area, but I've tried to watch quite a few videos uh, to learn the circuit, but also just hear how everything is pronounced. And I can't quite do the accent, I'll admit. But this is another one of those straights with a crazy corner in the middle of it here. Not quite as bad as Balagari, but still, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on a motorcycle through there. Now a series of third gear S's. Almost drifting a little wide. Make it through. We'll look ahead, there should be a brick wall coming up on the right side. And shift down a second for this corner. 
Just nip the grass on the way in. So we're coming up here, coming up to Baragaro, uh, which is another one of those iconic corners on the circuit. It's really a hill. Uh, second gear here for the top of the hill, but you'll see third gear nearly flat out. I think some of the bikes take this flat out so fast, just trying to get it close to the wall on the inside on the exit. Makes you smile every single time. S's now. Second gear. This is double left hander, very easy to run wide. Wanna take a late apex. Missed the apex a bit there. My own doing. Alright, this straightens out. Now we'll come to I believe it's Douglas Road corner. This comes into the town or village of Kirk Michael, which it's a really iconic place. You see a lot of pictures from here because the bikes go screaming through this town square. Past all these buildings, I would love to step outside of a pub or a house and just see a bunch of bikes go by at 150 miles an hour. I won't be quite as daring as they are. I'm going to understeer a bit there. Just getting it in time. back down a second. You can see one of those planes there. It just adds that little bit of atmosphere to the circuit that makes Jim's track so good and why this version conversion is just right on par. Alright, so we'll be looking for an Alpine Cottage, I believe it's called, coming up in a couple corners on the left. There it is, right in front of me there. I believe that's the Alpine Cottage, could have it wrong. But this That points me to the next uh, iconic turn, and you see a lot of video and things from this one. It's the Bala Bridge. Just take it nice and easy there. Almost understeered. Yeah, Bala Bridge here ahead. So, this one, quite iconic. I have to go all the way down to first gear. Have to take it very slow on a bike. This goes past a tavern, over this berm there. <laughs> it's like a motocross jump almost. But now get back on the throttle. I just think this is such a nice pairing of car and track. A uh, great car to just experience and try to learn a bit more about this circuit on. Requires a nice driving style. You can't push it too hard. You'll get into trouble early. Uh, but the car itself, I mentioned this in a video I did a while back on the Dundrod circuit in Grand Prix Legends. Uh, this car in 1954 would have raced at Dundrod, which not too dissimilar from this circuit, although this one is much longer. Coming to the quarry bends now. Just grab that curb a little bit. You can feel the curb on the wheel so nicely. But now on a nice exit here as we'll get onto the Sully Straight. Very high speed section. Has to church there. We'll come to a little bit of a kink that'll turn into a braking zone for another one of those classic 90 degree right handers. That's I'll break myself, probably breaking a little bit too early. But gotta survive. Yeah, much too early. Come down to first gear though. Sulby Bridge, right hander. Just keep it nicely on the curb there. I have a second to throttle it up, but now I need to go back down to first for this left hander. I just kind of coasting through here. <laughs> a little oversteer. This corner always catches me out, or did, he used to, but I've got the better of it now. Love 
love the road surface around here. It really makes you feel like you're driving on actual roads. But I think something that makes this track so difficult, and certainly the reason that I have not learned it flat out yet, is, is simply because it looks very samey, especially for through the first half of the lap here. I've got a second gear, all oh, this part. <laughs> These couple of corners, very easy to get caught out in. Yeah, the first half through all these trees and everything, uh, you do start to learn the differences of it. It's certainly no, absolutely no uh, issue with the track at all. It's just the fact that it does look somewhat all samey, so it's so hard to learn what corner might be next, what corner you're coming up to. I find it very useful for myself, and the reason I recite all these corners is just learning them, because now you know... All right, Bala Bridge, and then we come up to the Quarry Bends, and then we go to the Salby Strait. It's just easier to remember that way. And I know coming up here, it's going to straighten out in a minute, and we'll head towards pa Parliament Square. I just got to learn all the little bits between. But here we go, straightened out now. Hit the next corner. We'll come into this green bridge, that's right, and we'll come to a left, which is Schoolhouse Corner. Coming into Parliament Square, come down to first gear. I'm trying to tell my brake myself. Very tight here. It's definitely a place where there's a lot of spectators in real life. oversteer. This left-hander is deceptively slow, so easy to run wide there. Bit of a long right-hander, now to the Ramsey hairpin, another one of those places. The riders have to lay down their bike here, essentially, to get it around the corner. We can just crank some wheel into it. <laughs> I'm trying not to spin out, much like a rally stage at this point. up the hill. A couple of these corners known as waterworks, I believe. Long right-hander there. But now we'll start dipping out of the trees, and this is where we get to really the second part of the circuit. Just going over the top of the mountain, coming back to the start. Up to Gooseneck, which is really the last of the tighter corners here. <laughs> a little bit of locking up of the differential there. Didn't quite rev match on the downshift. There we go. Now through Gooseneck. And now work our way to go over the mountain. And I just love, I, I mentioned this in the Grand Prix Legends version, but I just love how the aesthetic changes, captures so, so well how different this part of the circuit looks. You see pictures, or at least when I first heard about the Isle of Man event, I'd see pictures of the first half of the circuit, you know, going around Ramsey Hairpin, going through the Ball of Crane, and then I'd see pictures here going over the top of the mountain and wonder, is that really the same circuit <laughs> at all? But yes, it is. It's just such a diverse, long track that you get a lot of different variation like this. still on the mountain here provide a beautiful view this part once again a lot of similarities between the corners also one that's pretty easy to run wide you can see I'm tiptoeing through a lot of this But it's something to work towards. I love doing the laps around here because every single one, I learn a little bit more about the track. And I know at some point, I'm going to be able to get around here. Not 
not flat out, <laughs> but you know, respectably, and it's just something to work towards. Did it back in the day when I learned the Norge Schleife. I think a lot of sim racers do that rite of passage. So moving on to something like the mountain course, and now that there's a wonderful version like this, just makes me want to learn it even more. second gear here Whoa. almost gonna run wide right onto the edge of the track <laughs> just a lazy understeer but so easy to do that in this car and I come up here I think this is the bungalow come over the tram tracks this is how you can get up and down the mountain if you're a pedestrian you can see the train right on the left there the tram Now we're through, I think, four of these right and left corners that lead towards the end of the mountain section. All of them have these little huts on the outside. All of them look somewhat the same. the apex there, late apex. This corner deceptively tighter than you think it would be. I've run wide so many times here, I think on a lot of videos that I've done on that track, but this time I did not. Let it go down in the record books. <laughs> to run too hot into here. This hasn't been too bad so far. I'm babying it a little bit over the top of the mountain, but I've only had <laughs> maybe three times now that I thought I was going off the track, so not too bad. All right, come through this left-hander, and I think, yeah, this is where it ends. So we'll head down the hill here towards, I believe it's called Pregni Ba. Another left-hander here. This is an inn that you can stay at. I think it would be a primo place, but just look at that view as you come down the hill. This is another one of those 90 degree right handers, just to make sure I'm not going to run too fast into. Yeah, Craig Neba. The dining room, I wonder what they serve there. We'll come to the end of the lap pretty much. A few more notable corners to go. Still plenty of time to throw the car off. right-hander do that flat out in the future down a second gear for the left it's big berms on each side of the circuit help keep the car in for sure but certainly would spin the car out a bit and second gear work it up the hill This is the Nook. Come, it's a really tight right-hander. Seems like you could almost go on straight there. Sure, I'm sure many have their first time out. And now to Governor's Bend. Not the first one, the second one here, yeah. Down 
of first gear. Uh, threw a couple S's. There we go. This is such a tight end of the lap, and I almost have to walk the bikes through here. <laughs> almost gonna run wide on the last last couple corners and do oh, almost stall the car too. But back out, get it onto the road for Governor's Bend. It's so tight. to the straight though and complete a somewhat conservative lap here at the Isle of Man so such a really really well done conversion it makes me want to drive the track a ton I, th I think having it available to some additional cars like we have uh, in our factor 2 is is a great thing and uh, definitely will lead to a lot of enjoyment for a lot of folks overall I think our factor 2 it has an interesting 20, reputation 20, 20, Seven. There we go. <laughs> Not a good lap at all, but our factor two has an interesting reputation. It's seen as such a great physics sim, but nobody wants to install it since it's so hard to install. And I will, I'll go on the record and say this was not difficult to install at all. Um, I found the sim pretty easy to install. Actually, just downloaded it off Steam. The the track, the car, both uh, just click to install those in the workshop uh, and get them running. So I hope some other folks try this. I think uh, for myself, this is a main draw to me to come to Art Factor Two and experience a little what it has to offer. So thanks for watching. I hope it's fun just to see the track and uh, I challenge you to go out there and try to do some good laps. I know I will continue practicing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.